Hi. Um, good evening, uh, everyone. Um, it's uh, indeed a pleasure, I think, uh, to have with us today um, uh, Kim Herford Nielsen uh, from uh, TreeXN. Uh, Kim um, is the founder of uh, TreeXN and the principal architect uh, of TreeXN, and in a short span of uh, 20 years, um, have uh, gathered a, a list of very impressive projects, uh, including the Royal Danish Embassy in Berlin, uh, the Architects uh, Building in Copenhagen, uh, Music Building in Amsterdam, and the Museum of Liverpool um, in the UK. Uh, Kim is also honored uh, with the Danish Knight's Cross um, and the Eckersberg Medal. Um, he's also a frequent judge uh, in Danish Architectural Association competition. Uh, and have sat in the Architectural Review Emerging Awards uh, to, uh, 2006. Um, Kim uh, from, uh, is going to talk to us today uh, about uh, works in progress uh, as, uh, and in which uh, TreeXN believe that, um, that good architecture uh, creates behavior and that is uh, principally uh, driven by uh, five words, uh, according to Kim, uh, in which how TreeXN operates. Um, that is, uh, investigate, ask, tell, draw, and build. Uh, so without much uh, further ado, uh, will you uh, please join me in welcoming Kim Herford Nielsen. Thank you. This is investigate, ask, tell, draw, and build needs an explanation. It's a, a book that we came up with here half a year ago, or nearly one year ago. Investigate is about the site, how we look into the site. Ask is how we um, work together with the, our clients. Tell is about how we tell stories. Draw is how we work with the details, and build is how we do uh, build uh, communities. We are about 110 people in, in two offices, one in Copenhagen, where I'm situated, and another one in Aarhus, which are the second largest city in, in, in Denmark. So there's 50 people, and that's where I originally come from. Uh, I come from the Ar Ar Aarhus Architect School that's about the same size as this one here, I understand, 800 uh, students. This is uh, from our new studio in, in Copenhagen, where we're sitting 60 people in, in a big loft that we just moved into half a year ago. And we made this artificial light uh, ceiling to get as much light into the space as possible. <coughs> And it's what just one big space because uh, uh, this is how architects, of course, worked uh, together. Um, two years ago, we started a, a department for sorry, a department for research and development, and this is Casper uh, Gula who is in charge of that, where we're investigating new materials, new technologies, uh, sp especially in, in 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 green terms, how green technologies and and some technologies uh, about how we can do different shapes. I'll come into that when you see some of our projects, because you can, as you do here, draw any, anything or make models of anything. The next thing is how to build it, and how to build it within the budget. That's a big, uh, that's a big problem. And this is, what, uh, this is what we have to do as architects, of course. Uh, we do a lot of modeling. A lot, a lot of modeling. <laughs> we do a lot of 3D. Everybody uh, works on 3D. At the, at the office, but everybody does this here too, and this is what I think is important, that you sit by your computer, work, uh, work in 3D, but at the same time, you have to physical make models, as you do here. So it's, it's basically, basically uh, the office is basically like, uh, like the school. This is from an exhibition that we just had in, uh, in Paris. It's moving to uh, A80s in, in Berlin now. Ten years ago, we finished uh, this building. It is uh, the Danish embassy in, in Berlin, part of the Nordic embassies, where Berger Parkinson made the master plan, and we did uh, the Danish embassy. This, this, this is the Danish embassy. Here's the Norwegian, made by Snøhøtte, and uh, the Swedish, made by uh, Gerd Wingård, and the Finnish, I can't remember their names, but, and, and then the community house. All the embassies are, are quite sculptural because it was a quite sculptural master plan Bergen and Parkinson did. So it was actually a little bit of a challenge to do a building within a certain shape. You had the height and you had the volume. And then it was more sort of an, an internal thing. So our building became very much internal. This is from the inside where we tried to show what Danish architecture is about. 
It's about detailing, about daylight, uh, about uh, composing different materials so you get a, a right atmosphere. Here's wood on one side and metal on the other side, so you get a balance. And the daylight, as I said, is very important because, yeah, you have it here in the UK too. You need as much daylight as you can get during the day because in the winter time it's like this here. <coughs> and then what is important uh, for me is uh, to create behavior and uh, in that sense that we want people to meet each other and how do you meet? Then you bring the staircase out so everybody takes the staircase. You have bridges where people can meet so they don't just sit in their offices. You don't have corridors. I hate corridors. So <coughs> we want open spaces where people can interact. And this is something that happens in, in all our buildings. Again, this building is, has a reference to Arne Jacobsen, who is a, a famous uh, old architect you might know of, uh, about how he worked with the detailing too. <coughs> but of course in our own way. Uh, Twelve years ago, we won a building for a concert hall, uh, a, a classical concert hall and jazz hall in Amsterdam. And it took eight years to complete it because to get the funding and everything. And in Holland, uh, it, they are very much looking into budgets. It's amazing what they can be built for hardly any money. Uh, in Holland, I realized, because we're working in Holland now, they built for half the amount of money per square meters average than they do here in the UK. So, <coughs> so and, and, and they realize these buildings. But the, it is a challenge how to get things up for hardly no money. Uh, this is Central Station, and this is the center of, of Amsterdam. Uh, this is a, an old warehouse area, and Rem Kohlhaas, or Oma, made a master plan for, for this area, and, and we were going to make the, the first or the most prominent building there, uh, the, the concert hall. Uh, the concert hall contains of a classical hall, uh, and, um, and actually the classical hall was called uh, the icebreaker, in the old days because it was situated where the old icebreakers were was, uh, situated. So that's why when we formed the, 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 the hall, we sort of made it moving like an icebreaker through the, through the water. Uh, and, the, and, the, and there's a BIM house, there's a, a jazz house. And these, these two halls are, are kept together by a big library on top of them. Or, or anyway, that was the original idea. So we had all the production here in the bottom, we had the music being played here, and we had the music be being stored up here. That was actually a very simple scheme for, for, uh, for the hall. And as we had a very low budget, we had the same kind of budget for this concert hall as we in Denmark anyway, would, would build a, an office building. So it was really turning every coin to get as much out of it as possible. At the end, we had to um, leave out uh, the library. There was no budget for that. And then I wanted to leave out the cap up here. And that actually stopped the whole project for one year because the public wanted and demanded the cap to be uh, included in the project. So they got a little bit of funding so we could build the cap, which is now containing uh, all the uh, electrical equipment. And, and uh, before we had the library and the administration up here, now we, we have it at the end of the cap. So it's and that way we, we did a cheaper solution. This is how it looks today. When we started up, this building here was the first one to be built, and then we were the second one. And now, uh, after these uh, yeah, 12 years, uh, everything is built out all along here, and even this island here. There was hardly anything when we started up there at that time. As I said, what we we had a very low budget, so what we tried to aim at, aim at was to, or our reference anyway, was to uh, industrial buildings or, or shipyard buildings that are transferred into cultural buildings. This kind of atmosphere we wanted to have in the building. Another thing is we tried to, to create a, a Dutch atmosphere. And what is a Dutch atmosphere? That's a relaxed atmosphere. When the Dutch people go to concert, they don't get dressed up. They are very relaxed people, very cultural. They love, love music. 
And to make a concert hall only, it's only for contemporary classical music and contemporary jazz music. That's ex extraordinary. I, I don't think there's many countries that build so special halls for so special music, but they do in Holland. And it's, and it's funded by uh, state money. Uh, again, light, daylight and artificial light is important in the building. So, <coughs> so uh, we get as much daylight into the building and the daylight uh, is shaping what is inside the building. But in the evening, you, you see more what is inside the building from the outside. And, and I think this light environment has been very, is very important for, for how you experience the building. There's a big public hall all, al all around the, the, the concert halls. And that's for um, musical events. So the staircases here are not only to walk on, they are for people to sit on and, and, and listen to music being played. Down here is a small stage. That's for morning television. Every morning they have uh, a television uh, situated in this place. And this here is the staircase up to the jazz hall. Jazz hall is actually starting up here on top. So people are queuing up. Uh, and this is the foyer spaces for the uh, classical hall. Uh, very few materials, rough, f fairly rough wood, concrete, uh, steel and glass, of course. But that's the only material. <coughs> and there's a cafe in front of the concert hall. Uh, and when you look through the building, you get this sort of Pianese-like uh, building. But this is what we designed 12 years ago. So, of course, there's been a big development in how, how we do design now. We have de developed a lot, but, but still, it's, uh, I'm quite happy about the building. The inside uh, <coughs> is a, a multi-flexible hall. Actually, the client wanted a, a black box. We didn't want to make it black. Uh, so we wanted to have uh, colors in it, a visual experience together with the music experience. So we have this light feature that can, that can contain any kind of uh, color. So here's from the opening concert, uh, another concert here. So you can create this uh, warm and cold atmosphere, whatever you want to, to uh, complement to the, to, to the music. The ceiling can, can move up from 11 meters to 22 meters, so you can completely change the, uh, the volume of the hall as well. We do a lot of, beside cultural buildings, we do a lot of uh, educational buildings. And five years ago, we, were, we won this competition for a new uh, college, a high school in, in, in Denmark, for students from 15 to 19 years old. Uh, with a new school reform that has been quite uh, um, looked into, even here from UK. I think now we're trying to get into schools in UK that's uh, developing towards this kind of education too. It's a sort of education where you don't have normal classrooms or normal classes. You, uh, you're taught in a different way where you have a subject and you're working in groups and it's very open space. There's actually no classrooms in, in this room here. This space here is a school for a thousand students, and it's one big open space. So we ha have to create. So we had to create a lot of different spaces in this this one space, small spaces, big spaces, whatever. So you can f find your own uh, space where you like to, where you feel comfortable. Um, another thing that's important in this school is that all the in between areas as it is when you make an office building or any kind of building, I think, is all the, all the, for example, the staircase. There you can meet people and you can interact with people and talk to people. Or the, or the cantina or the cafe areas and like that. That's a, that, that, that are quite important areas. So we try to do something special out of that. The idea came out, out of this shape and, and a boomerang shape. And when you put it together, the, I, I have to say, say that this, um, the building had to be five-story high, and actually the client wanted one big hall, but it had to be one big hall and five-story high. So how can we make it open five-story high? We can do it in this way. Have this boomer, boomerang shape, so you from the top to the bottom have a visual connection. And here you have more uh, saluted areas where you have quietness when you go out towards the facade, and when you come out towards the middle, you have a more openness and more 
big space. And then you have a connecting spaces between all the different layers. So when you have science up here and the science people work together with the, the language people here, then, then you have connections. And you can see what everybody is doing. Actually, I think this kind of scheme would be quite good for an architect school because architect school is very much about synergy, very much about working together, as I see it. So that was actually very much my inspiration for this school, was to make it as, as the architect school where everybody works together and to create a lot of different spaces in that sense. We were up against uh, Tu Ito and uh, Dominique Perron, Perron and uh, yeah, uh, eight international architects in, in this competition. And luckily we won it. And this is from the competition and a section in, 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 the, in the school a normal school for this uh, for 1,000 students would be in Denmark 16,000 square meters. But because we, had, we do not have any corridors, we could compress it to be only 12,000 square meters. Then we could work with bigger volume and, uh, and have more a spatial feeling inside the building. You come into the bottom and you have a cantina, and then you have sports areas down here, and you can use the sports for, for, for states, for example. And then you have all the layers up in the school. So when we, after we won the competition, we started a workshop up together with the, with the client, a client group. And we put the whole brief out on a 1 to 50 model like this. So here's everything that has to be on every layer. And then we worked for three months. And after three months, we had put everything where it was supposed to be. But with the flexible furniture that you could move around, and out here by the surface of the facade, we have glass partitions. So in, in here's more like uh, traditional classrooms. They're called team rooms here. Uh, only a very few columns, three big columns containing staircases, ventilation, no, electricity, and, and, and uh, elevators. But beside from that, only six more columns. <coughs> Yeah, then we, um, during the pr this uh, cooperation with the client, we came up with these uh, auditoriums, that on top of the auditoriums, we have a, a lounge area for intermissions or for sort of relaxed group work that like, the students really like. I'll come back to that. Uh, in the competition, there was a master plan for the whole block, and this is the master plan we made the layout, and there had to be a, a parking building in, in, in this lot here too. Instead of making a parking building, we made a lifted up landscape. And here we have the outdoor areas uh, for, the, for, the, for the school. So this is a, a model showing uh, the school with the inside and, and the outside for the out, outside uh, areas, where there's a beach volley and street basket and, and small gardens where, we can, where you can teach in the summertime too. So the first part is now finished one and a half year ago, the actual uh, college and school. And from the outside, we have uh, the sun shading parties that are the louvers that moves with the sun. And we have, uh, we have some graphic on it, assembling books. This is a big bookshelf. This is containing learning. <coughs> and. Uh, at night time, you can have a very vis visual contact to the inside of the building as well. <coughs> Here you see the, the parking lot lifted up, outside areas being, being made, and it's just finished. Uh, now they're starting on another school next to the school here. Again, an architectural competition. <coughs> so when you come in, in, into the school, uh, the school is quite square from the outside. It had again, had to do with the master plan for the whole area. Master plan had said you had to follow this line and this line and this line. So everything became a little bit more the square than we really like. But the inside is, is a lot more moved around. So you come in and you have, you have the cantina here and you look down to the sports area that you can do for, use for a stage. Then you have a st staircase where all 1,000 students all have to pass. They're not allowed to take the elevators unless they are disabled. <coughs> that makes everybody meet each other, and you, and from up here you can see who is coming. So you can see here the staircase coming up, 
and the steps here going down to the uh, to the sports area. Here, there's today there's tables here too where they where they eat in the lunch hour, but where they do group work too. And this is uh, when you're standing in the middle of the canteen and looking up. Here you have the whole visual connection of the of the space <coughs> with all the boomerangs shaping around. And the staircase goes all the way up to the, to the roof where we're going to do a, a botanical roof garden too when we get the funding for it. The first floor, you can see the, uh, the auditoriums, small plenum rooms it's called here. We have natural ventilation in the, this big space, <coughs> so it's a, it's a fairly uh, sustainable building as well. Uh, and because we have this big space, we, have, we can easily have um, natural ventilation. We have some louvers we can open up up here and some, some in the bottom, so we have this draft through the building. We have these boxes all over the place, so you can, this is where you connect for computer and, and power and whatever, so everything can be moved around. And this is uh, the lounge areas, <coughs> uh, where we've got fat boys. These elements you can move around so you can create small spaces for, for teaching. So this is how they, they work in the daily, daily time when you're sitting at the lounge areas. They do group work now, as you can see. <coughs> Uh, but the funny thing is, we have got a very good acoustic environment in there, especially in these areas, because here's, that's, that's the only place where there's carpet, carpet here and up here, and that creates sort of a bubble in, in, in the big space. So you've, when you're in here, you feel you are in a in a smaller space, even if it's in, it, it is in the big space. It's actually so intimate that uh, there was a parent that complained about that his daughter had sex with another guy here, but but <coughs> so they must have felt that it was really. <laughs> really uh, intimate, but you can look down on it from all different sides. So. so you have a big view over the whole space. And this is a normal day at the school, actually, where all thousand students are, are in, the, in the school. I don't know how big a school would be here in the UK for a thousand students, but, um, but as I said, a normal sc school, actually, it's built for 800 students, and they put 200 more into it. So a normal school would at least be 16,000 square meters. Here we have 12,000 square meters. And you don't feel it's overloaded. People sort of move out in all the corners. And, and here you see there's somebody being taught here. There's another group over here, some here, and some doing group work here, whatever. And the idea is that this, these young people get used to how it is to go on university, how it is when they come out to the real life afterwards. So they have a responsibility to themselves. They're not taught that in, in, in classrooms that this you have to do this and this. It's very much up to themselves. So this is, uh, as I said, this, is, this building creates uh, behavior, and, 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 and that's what I think is, uh, is interesting. And here the, the staircase goes all the way up to the, to the ceiling. <coughs> We designed these light, light, big lights here with the uh, manholes. This is where you can go into the construction, too. So you can pull down the, the light, and then you can come into the construction if you want to, if you need to, for, to go, go in there. And then the louvers, they, they get color to the scheme. There's no other colors in, into the scheme. The funny thing is now it's been working for one and a half year, and there's no graffiti in the school. There's posters, of course, but there's no graffiti and hard, hardly any stealing. So it, uh, it has some, some effect on the students. Another funny thing is that, uh, is that uh, it's the most mixed national, nationally wise school in Denmark. That's, that means that there's most different nationalities here, more than uh, in any other school, and it's, it's the far most popular one to, co to line up for. When when we do uh, we do a, a few um, commercial buildings like like this bank building here, it's more or less out from the same scheme. When when a, this bank called Saxo Bank when they came to us they said they want a bank for themselves and they wanted a learning environment and they wanted uh, a scheme that shows what they are about. They a very progressive investing bank moving forward. They are they're doing quite well in these times too, but <coughs> but. Uh, 
So we wanted to create a building that was showing them these people here moving forward. So first we, we made the layout uh, a, a scheme that flips, you see every second time it flips around. So you have big trading floors here and you've got an environment with a staircase here in the middle so you can have always connection to all the other floors. Again, no corridors. <coughs> and uh, when, we, when we had the, the construction up, everybody said, something wrong with this because all the columns were leaning at different angles. Uh, but to uh, create this movement of the building that is quite important. It's in, in, a, in a new uh, harbor area that's developing where there used to be a brewery in, in, in Copenhagen. Uh, it's got a f the reason why we have got this pattern is, is, is not only for, this, for the pattern or for the, uh, to make it look interesting, it is very much to, we had to have a triangular to make these shapes here. Uh, and, and, and another thing is to, we, we don't want too much sun into the building, so we had to have some shading areas too. Uh, in the evening, you have very visual contact to the inside. <coughs> when you come into the building, you have this, this movement uh, and this connection between all the different floors that you could see a little bit before at the, at the school. Uh, but here it's even moving, moving more around. We are now building the Museum of Liverpool that is to say we have had a conflict with our clients, so we are not actually involved in it anymore, but we did the whole scheme and designed the whole scheme. But we had some discussion about the cladding and some discussion about the, uh, some design issues that we didn't agree about, so we had to, um, unfortunately, to, to, um, to leave the concept. Uh, but anyway, it was a competition where we were up against uh, Edith and Liebeskind, uh, Snöhead, some other architects, where we had three weeks to come up with a scheme. <coughs> Uh, and, and uh, for an interview, and three weeks are not very long, so we we worked very hard. Liverpool, as you know, was used to be the gateway to the west, <coughs> as they say in Liverpool anyway. It used to be the uh, third last, third most important city in the world. That must be the Western word anyway. Uh, <coughs> they used to be uh, what is it, about a million people in, in, in Liverpool. One and a half million, now a million people in this actual Liverpool. But uh, during the last a little bit more than 100 years, people have moved away, so now they're only half a million, and people are now coming back to it, so the development is starting up. But it has been in great importance to, uh, to the, uh, from, from UK to, to America, for example, and, and to the rest of the world, too, from the, from the docks. And this museum is is telling the story about Liverpool. It has got 150,000 items from, from locomotion, lo local locomotives uh, to Beatles, Beatles collections to football, whatever. There's a lot of different stories to be told. And the idea is that there should be um, changing ex exhibitions at, at, the, at the museum from time to time. Uh, this is the actual site, and this is the old part of Liverpool coming down to the waterfront. And now they're building heavily along the waterfront, as they are doing in nearly every city in the world. First, they, they have uh, very open areas, and certainly they close off the connection between the city and the, and, and, and the water with buildings again. And, and this can be a problem. So what we wanted to do was not to to make a big, massive structure, but more to make a structure that was fitting into the promenade and, and, and uh, not uh, closing off the view from, from the city and not obstructing uh, the promenade too. So here you have the old border of the city. This is the three graces, as they're called, in, in, uh, in Liverpool that, that used to be uh, the very important uh, ship company's uh, headquarters <coughs> from the times where Liverpool was very important. And these are all the, the dockyards in here. And this is a harbor, a promenade, and this is the site. And what we want to do is actually 
make a connection between all the different ways to, to move in the area by making the, the building a nexus between all the different lines. So the building sort of becomes a bridge between all the different lines more than an obstruction. So it, I think it's important when you build in a sensitive place like, like this, this is a World Heritage Site, that you, um, that you put something in that makes a, the site better than it was before. This is actually is, is what we try to, to aim at here. So you can actually walk through the building without coming into the museum. And this is what has been part of our uh, original idea. So we did this uh, little film here. Uh, this is still within the first uh, uh, three weeks. Where we went to Liverpool on a typical rainy day. So we made it the blue film. And this was actually the first of our blue films. Since, since we did this film here, we done a lot of, we always do blue sketch films for presentations because we won this. So. <laughs> uh, yeah, here you see the scheme, like this nexus, as I told you. And this direction for, this, for, the, for the scheme is there were some very important side lights from the, from the water and from the Alport, Alport uh, uh, what do you call it? Yeah. Alport Dock, yeah, next to it. So they should be able to, to, to see straight to the three graces. And here's the idea, initially the idea about that you can walk through the, through the scheme without uh, going into the museum. At this stage here, we didn't even know where the entrance was. This is more an idea, it's a vision. And this is, of course, what you can do in, in, in two or three weeks. Uh, and this was what they aimed for. Uh, we wanted a, a scheme that's sort of the promenade that breaks up. It's a stone structure. But the same way, there used to be a shame, uh, shipyard at this place here, so we wanted to make a reference to this shipyard. And then the exhibition areas inside are very flexible areas. Even though the, the building is very shaped, but the inside is, is quite uh, neutral spaces, as it should be. So here it's going to be told the story about beetles, of course, uh, the war story, and uh, of course the football stories too. And the building is looking down back to, towards Liverpool and out towards the river that's been so important to, to Liverpool too. And as I said, it's a fairly low structure compared to the, the old buildings. We don't want to, to make a big obstruction and we don't want to compete in height. So here we have the, the scheme. And when you're sailing along here, we, were, we had to make a, a visual connection to the three graces. So the building is leaning back here. And from over here, there was a visual, there should be a visual contact to the building as well. So it was quite, there was quite a lot of uh, things that we had to take in, in consideration with this, uh, this design. This is how the site looked before we started up. And this is how our scheme comes into, into place. There used to be an old dog yard here, so we're opening part of that up for this is Manchester dock, so being a part of the public realm uh, towards the city, and the main entrance is here, but you can come up and go in to the two sides. And this is how it's going to be. There's going to be a, a canal that they're doing now, so you can sail underneath the building to this, to this uh, dog yard. We did, did a lot of models too. This is one of the work models we did during the process where we have the flexible uh, galleries on top and the more uh, definite uh, uh, galleries in the bottom. And we've got a central staircase in the middle that connects that where from where you can choose your own way around so you don't have to see all the different galleries if you don't want to. <coughs> and you have permanent, permanent yeah, see through, whatever, permanent. Yeah, I can't say the, the word. <laughs> Transparency in the building so you can look out and, and see what this is about. This is about Liverpool. So the center, you have a big stair staircase coming up, and, and over here you can walk past here and see if you want to go in into the museum. You can just go in the staircase, and then you are inside the museum this, uh, from the main entrance. And this is uh, at the end of uh, one of the galleries where you have the look back towards Liverpool.
out the facade. We didn't want just a straight facade. We wanted uh, uh, something to refer to the, the old buildings. They had a lot of small things on the, on the facade, a lot of relief. So we wanted to work with the relief. Uh, and we ended up with this relief here that was supposed to be cladded with the, the travertine. Uh, I don't know what happened. Okay. And um, we did a lot of models about how big the relief should be in and how it should be. So we did one-to-one -one in cardboard just to see how it would, s would be working. So the building will look appear different if the sun is shining or if it's uh, what time of day it is. Uh, and I th this is things I, I think it's very important. That it's just a not a flat surface. <coughs> and as I said, we wanted a travertine uh, facade because it has this structure and this uh, texture to it. Unfortunately, there were, that was one of the discussions we had with the client. The client changed this material to a dual marble uh, because they thought it was cheaper. And uh, this is what I'm not happy about. Uh, and we uh, shaped the building so you disabled people could come up. Uh, and that was actually part of the sculptural way of the facade. Making here you have a, a rendering of, uh, of, of how it's going to be. And this, uh, it is going to be looking at uh, fairly much like this, but oh shit. But, uh, but just with a, a more dead looking stone. And then we had a, a, a glass facade here that was zigzagged and moved that way and made a flat facade too. Here we have the, the inner dock the, that we're opening up, the Manchester dock, and here's the main entrance. And this is uh, during the process with the big street steel structure coming up and the cladding starting up, first the under cladding, and here we have the, the relief, the stones coming up, and as you can see, it, it hasn't got the same texture as a travertine has, but it still has the relief, and that's, that's, uh, that's important, I think. And this is when you look down from one of the three graces. The big staircases come up on both sides are very important for not only walking on, but sitting on, too. So this is a big event place. It's going to be next to the building. So people can be sitting here overlooking in the, the events, and to the other side there's a big regatta, so they can be sitting overlooking the regattas too. So the building is going to be part of the movement and part of the events that's going to be on the uh, harbor front, uh, and part of the movement too, which is uh, important. <coughs> we just won a competition for an aquarium called the Blue Planet. and. Uh, it is about storytelling, I think, when you're doing something like that. I've been to maybe 15 different, different aquariums around the world, and none of them has really told a story about what it is about. It's about fish and water. N normally, it's just buildings, and then you put fish into them, aquariums into them. So I think this is a, an important story to tell, to tell how, how do you get into the water, and how I, when, from when you come to the building, you can always at that stage, you can see what it's all about. So we, we, we worked on the competition for six, seven weeks, and we used the, f the first four weeks just to get, uh, get the idea about what the story we wanted to tell. And uh, then we came up with this whirlpool, this one. This so we want to suck people into the building. And this, this is the idea about how to shape the building. <coughs> so we... Uh, we had the, the brief coming out here where they have a, a, a foyer space and then the different, uh, different uh, aquariums around. And then when you move them around like this, you get the shape. And the good thing about the shape is that in the brief set, we had to have uh, possibilities of, ex of making a second face extending the, the, the buildings too. And you can do that in all the different uh, aquariums too. And, and even keeping the special shape. So people are walking in into a pool and going down into the pool and coming into a foyer space underneath uh, an aquarium. So 
when they come into the free space, they are looking up into water. And then they are going out to the different aquariums. And we are working together with a, a light artist and a sound artist too, so we want to create this feeling about being underwater when you're coming into it. So this is a model we made. Uh, it was, this was a two-stage competition. Uh, it's no, not very difficult to, to draw something like this. The difficult thing is, again, to build it, it's especially to build it within a, a budget. And we have a fairly tight budget here. So we had to prove we could build it. That was the second phase. That was more, more or less about proving how we could build this within the budget. So we came up with different solutions. And now we're going to do it in glass fiber. Another thing is, when you're doing it in an aquarium, if you do it in steel, you have a problem because of uh, the very aggressive uh, uh, climate with the uh, salt water and, 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 and everything rust, even stainless steel rust there too. So if, if we do it in glass fiber, then, then we're more on safe ground. So we, we lift up the aquarium a little bit so to have possibilities of making a, a basement underneath. The real sea is out here. They will make a pool up here, and you walk down into the pool. And the water is going to float over the, the edge, so you really feel now you're going into the, into the water. And uh, you're sort of walking into the big wave. This is uh, actually a skylight to a, a pingwing area that's underneath here. So, so, so we're... Uh, so th these shapes here are going to contain closed areas and open areas as well. So when you come into the foyer space, we had to come up with a construction. And, and this is not the final one, by the way. We have to come up with a construction, how we can keep this water up there uh, in, in a affordable way. Because we are not, cannot afford a big, heavy window up there. So this is one of the ideas where we have this, uh, f these frames that are, that are lifting up the water. Uh, and then when you come into the the big aquarium, you have the you have the ceiling formed as, as waved waves, and then and, and you will feel you underneath the water. This is uh, a model that we um, uh, produced in, in sections and, pu and put together. We have a, a model shop at the office too with um, the same kind of machines that you have out here more or less. <coughs> and this is a, a rendering of the first phase. And this is a, on a good rainy day when the people want to go to the aquarium. If it's sunshine, they don't want to go to the aquarium, so they really like rainy days. That's why we showed it like this. <coughs> and we made this, uh, this film with the idea shown here. How you get sucked into the water. And when you look... Certainly, when they got this idea, there's a lot of things in nature that create this kind of shapes. And here's an, an octopus. It's got this uh, shelf uh, in the same kind of uh, shape. And when you look in big scale, you have, the, you have it too, this gravity uh, shape. Let me move towards uh, the Earth. And the site is just next to the airport. So um, you will actually, the runway is just next to it. So <coughs> when you fly in, you to the right, you would look down on the, on the roof here. So that's why the, the roof is quite important too. So hopefully tourists will see this and think, oh, this is where we're going to go. And you get a different vision from when you're looking from the ground, of course, and then from, uh, from the, the air. But but there's a meaning behind this, this form, and this is the story it's going to tell, the story about the whirlpool. And from this, 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 this hole here, you can choose your own way, so you don't have to um, line up and all the people have to go the same way. In aquariums, you always uh, get stuck when you come to the sharks because all the kids want to see the sharks at the same time. So here you can choose another way around. And th this was uh, one of our, the main uh, ideas, and that was one of, one of the reasons, too, why we, we won the competition. We 
try to make these films here sketchy because at this stage here, of course, we don't have all the details. And actually, I hate these very uh, glamorous uh, films. It's more about the, uh, this is uh, more or less just to show the idea. So that's why we keep it so rough. This is a, a scheme we did together with the Arab uh, for Renault Truck. It's again about telling a story, but, it, but, but in a quite different way. This is uh, about trucks. It's a showroom for trucks, Renault Trucks, and this is a headquarters for trucks. Uh, outside Lyon, there's a factory that where they make all the trucks, and there's a green corridor coming in from the, from out from the country all the way into the center of the city. In this green area, the side is, and in the brief said that we had to make a, a green building, a literally green building because it had to be part of this uh, green line. And uh, we first started off with these models here where we came up with lots of different uh, structures. And Tommy from the office, he went to, to visit the uh, Arab and Sophie Laboma and was t <laughs> told, why do you want to lift up the the trucks in the air, I said, okay, you're right, you're right. What a stupid idea. If you're going to tell the story about the, the trucks, we have to tell them, we have to find out what environment the trucks are in. And the trucks are, of course, on the ground. So then we started doing landscapes. But trucks are not driving around on landscapes. They're more driving around on, on roads and bridges and to, uh, uh, what do you call it, uh, highway uh, restaurants and like that. So this was actually our reference to the to the building. Another thing was that Renault wanted to to build another uh, scheme in 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 uh, China, another one in America. So we had to make it very international in the language. And what is more international than roads and bridges? It's very. It looks like the same everywhere you are. So that's that's why this uh, idea to the scheme came up. So it's a, it's a it's a wave. It's a bridge, a green bridge in one way, and then it's a more uh, concrete bridge in, in, in the other way. <coughs> so it becomes this intersection of roads and green areas at the side woven into each other. And by the repeating, it, be, it, it gets a sort of a more iconic value because you can add another section and it still has, uh, it still has uh, the same kind of impact. Uh, if, if then China needs only two sections, it's all right. If they need four, it's all right. Actually, by repeating it, it becomes uh, stronger because we, we tried with a more random one, but this repeating, I think, was quite, was quite the right way to do it. When you see it out from the main road, you have this, uh, this vision of it, and you can see the showroom underneath here, and then the, the headquarters on top of it, and it's got a clear reference to to uh, motorway uh, restaurants. <coughs> and when you come by the side here, here's uh, where the trucks come in. And, and here's uh, the garage where they teach uh, the mechanics how to repair the trucks. Yeah, here's the teaching area. And again, there's in two sections, three sections on top, there's uh, the administration. And you've got the lawn coming up here person working more on the lawn. And we have a big flexible area in the bottom that's still got character. Uh, it's got auditoriums and, 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 and they have all sort of, sort of uh, events down there. And it's got a folio roof, very see-through, uh, a light in construction. And this is how it's going to look at night time. Then there's just a, sh uh, a small project that we um, unfortunately didn't win. And the other one we didn't win either. We were quite, quite close to winning it. Uh, we actually thought we won it. But it is uh, quite hard in France. Some, somehow it's always a French architect at the end. And that was, was what happened there too. <coughs> we were in a it was a two-stage competition. And uh, I even said they would call me another name if we didn't win it. So <laughs> I should never have said that. <laughs> But this was our 
our solution for the Danish Pavilion in the Expo 2010 in, 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 the, in Shanghai, where we sort of folded the Danish flag, and, and we actually did a story out of it that from the outside it looks like the Danish flag, and it's got a lot of small windmills here, small fans, <coughs> so it's telling this story about sustainability. And when you come into the building, it's a big kaleidoscope, so from the inside, you see the world outside, and that story is, was probably a little bit too intellectual, was that we are national from the outside, but we, we are only something learning from the, from the outside, learning from the, the rest of the world. All we know is coming from the outside. Uh, so, and, and this, this is an open structure. It is it's telling stories about new cities and better cities. So it was sort of a, what we wanted to make was sort of a, an interactive uh, space where you walk around. This is our, these are all mirrors, and you can see yourself when you're walking around, and, and the, the surroundings, in that way, they react on your movement. <coughs> and it's, it's like a city because it's open in between. It's not an enclosed space. Uh, I think I might uh, finish with this product here because I've got a lot of products. But <laughs> anyway, this is a product from from uh, Dublin, uh, and 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 we always start up a bit like this. We cut up the whole brief in in small blocks, like you probably do when you're doing uh, your work too. And all the different colors are the different parts of the the brief too. And this is actually the amount of volume the client wants to put on this site. They wanted 750% building mass on a site where the buildings are this site, size here. So this is quite a challenge, what, what to do about that. So we st started stacking these in different ways. And we know one of these buildings here cost uh, 7.5 million pounds. So this guy who's got this building here, he wants sun in his garden and he wants not to be disturbed by the next next door neighbor. So we have to find out of a, a scheme that has big scale, small scale in it, in, in it at the same time. So here you have the small scale towards the small building, the bigger scale towards the, the office uh, area uh, that's over here. It doesn't matter so much about the scale over here, but here you have to be very careful about the scale. And this the, the building is shaped like a roller coaster so that it allows the sun to come down to the building to the other side. This is a, a scheme that contains uh, shopping center, commercial, and office space, and uh, housing. So we stacked it with um, a big shopping center in, in, in the bottom, and then uh, office spaces, commercial space, spaces here, and then on top of that, housing. And came up with this. Uh, and when, when you're building so high-rise in a, in a in an area, we, you want to, we need to add something extra. So we try to make it a green building, looking more like a, a piece of landscape that, that's put into the, to this suburb. And here you're, s here you're looking from the shopping area up to the office part. There are big beams here. And we made, again, a little film for the first presentation. So there was a, a two uh, stage competition, and we were chosen for the second second round. Uh, there's only three architects. So there's ten for the first, and three got on to the second one. And we came up with a scheme where they they have a fitness center into the brief too. So we made this this orange thing is a, a running track that is within the tree, uh, scheme, so you can just keep on running. This is very much to just to show the structure and the idea more than to show the details of the product. And here on the running track, running really fast and looking down to the shopping center and up to the office spaces and higher up, we have the, the housing part.
they really like the scheme and uh, and uh, but they had some some crucial uh, things about the scheme that they wanted not the horizontal uh, deviation between the the commercial and the housing they wanted a, a vertical uh, so we had to we have to completely change the scheme and it was a little bit difficult because we had this nice movement so we tried to to make a lot of different models so we see we came up with a, I think 20 different models so we came up with this scheme here where the this is our these are all office spaces and this is a hotel and this is uh, the housing spaces we still had the small scale big scale but it wasn't as clear as as, as the first day so we didn't won didn't win uh, the second stage, unfortunately, because our scheme was better for for for, for the horizontal uh, layout than the, the vertical one. So here you have the shopping center, underground. That was what they wanted. We had some workshops with the clients for the second round here. I was. Yeah, I just want to show it. The last project that we that we just would been working on now, two towers in, in Copenhagen. And this is a li little bit about how we, we worked on a on a on a, a master plan for this is a pier a pier where there used to be a big warehouse for UN and before that it was a marble uh, harbor. Uh, and we we're gonna contain a new area here for a UN village and then some housing areas and then uh, some office spaces. And this here is a harbor for, for f ferry boats, and out here is big cruise ships. But it should be possible for big cruise ships to come in here. And a very interesting thing is that this site here, that's a client who wanted to build a high-rise building. But he was not allowed to build a high-rise building here because there was no connection to public transport. So if we could come up with an idea for a bridge connection over here, here's a, a railroad station, then we had a scheme. So we came up with this idea. So you have a pedestrian uh, bridge that's uh, 65 meters up in the air, and we have a we have a high-rise building uh, where from where the that's working like a pylon where from where the, the the bridge is hanging, and that then the idea came up with this high-rise. Uh, and here you have the the housing areas. And this this uh, office block here is is a sound barrier for the noise from the ships, so you could have a low-rise housing area in this, this bit here, and here's a hotel. So this was the first scheme, and then we had to make the tower a little bit more fat to have more square meters in it, as it always is. And then certainly we were told we had to go out in a competition for it. Uh, and we actually created the, the whole idea about the scheme, so it was quite, oh shit. And we were up against, uh, by uh, others, uh, Stephen Hall, and he won it at the end. Shit. But anyway, <laughs> <laughs> anyway, I like my scheme better. <laughs> the scheme was to uh, we were we was in the brief. We had to build one tower, had the, have the bridge, and have a lower building. So what we did was to make two towers, lay the one tower down. So we had this this movement, and uh, then you could take an elevator up walk along the bridge and take the elevator down, or you can have a gondola going all the way out to the, underneath the building, going all the way out to the, to the railroad station. <coughs> so we, this is work models, 3D work models. You can see here how we work with it, uh, the scheme, but it's more or less how it ended up looking. Uh, and actually, there was, it was one big thing that was shaped together. And Stephen Hall, he made two buildings with a bridge you can leave or have whatever. So I think what was, what was, uh, was it the problem about our scheme was it, it was one thing. That's the good thing about it too. But you know, a client he wants to build one tower and then maybe another one some years later. And our our scheme was hanging together. That was ended up being the problem for it. So, um, but anyway, this was supposed to be the icon of Copenhagen and the entrance, the 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 arch or the gateway to Copenhagen. So here you see the big ships coming underneath. And this is actually 75 meters up. 
And we made it like a big sustainable. We, we, we did a lot about the sustainable construction, sustainable office spaces too, with um, a lot of uh, different issues we took up in the building. <coughs> so it was, um, and we calculated and it was in the budget, whatever. But it was not flexible that you could build one building at a time and then the other building next to it. And we made these models to show how how uh, to build it. This is a one to 200 model that we did it in our studio. <coughs> After we got the laser cutter, you, you, as you know, as students, certainly you can do a lot of different things and we do a lot of different things with it. It's a heavy thing. I think I will um, stop here. I think we'll, we'll take a few questions. Um, is, are there any questions from the floor? Um, this project is built at Norhound. Yeah, it's Norhound, yes. Uh, and uh, the building is across the one room. Yes. Yes. It is, so you know Copenhagen. Yeah. <laughs> I, uh, I lived there for eight years. Yeah. Maybe I have one question. I think it, it, it kind of comes back to uh, the synopsis of the lecture. I think one of your opening statements is yeah. that you said that good architecture, in a way, creates behavior. Yeah. And I was thinking as you were presenting, in a way, creating, behav creating behavior, if I were to put it in another way, is essentially it's a building provoking a particular reaction. Right? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, of course, the leading on question would be, yeah. what, what do you think uh, is the type of reaction that you want your buildings or you want your architecture to provoke? Yeah, it, it all differs what, what sort of building it is. If it's an educational building, I want to provoke certain kind of behavior in this. If it's an of office building, a different one. If it's a public building, I want reaction from, uh, from people and I want them to feel that this is a special place. Uh, I think some of the areas, in, for example, in La de France areas and like that, what they are lacking for is is, uh, is uh, ambiance, you know, uh, feeling that you are you are in a place. So uh, I think this is the most important thing that you, that is that you feeling feeling that you are in a place and it is reacting on you. I think it's uh, like the the pavilion was uh, Danish pavilion was an example on that that with a with a mirror facade that. When you walk along, you can you, you can see yourself in, in different angles. Uh, I always like to to work with very much with the interactive facades. It can be movable or whatever, but things that are not that are, are, are changing when you walk around and you look different from different angles and mm. like that. Well, I mean, I start by saying I love your buildings, so it's wonderful to see it all. But we have buildings in such desolate spaces. I mean, you know, for anybody who hasn't been there, building on the side of the River Mersey, God, that's a cold place. It's, it's, it's desperate even in the middle of summer on a hot day, you know. Get there in November or February, and that's a terrible cold place to be. You know, it's the biggest tidal range of any river, I think, in Europe. Um, the wind comes whipping in there. It's, it's a cold, desolate place. And so I'm thinking about inside and outside and intimacy. And when you get inside the building, then you've got a level of protection and your spaces internally are just so rich. You know, I love them. Outside the buildings, you need more than one building or at least a building with a form that wraps itself around and starts to give you some protection externally. And that takes me straight away from your object sat in desolate spaces to the um, Berlin Embassy building where you are forced into a master plan that's conceived by somebody else. And there we've got a series of outstanding architects building, but the rules are no higher than that and no wider than that, and maybe you've got to come down this side and have a colonnade down that side. So the question for you, I don't know really what the question is, I'm just sort of thinking around it, but one thing that starts to come straight into mind is do you actually find working within somebody else's master plan an intolerable restriction and you want to be in those open spaces where you are completely free or do you find that a challenge all of its own which you are also willing to respond to? 
I find it's a challenge of its own. Actually, um, I don't mind working in a master plan or to do infill in a, it's the same to, to do infill in a, in a city too. I think that's a, that's a challenge and that's, that really inspires me too. When we started up the competition for the, for the Danish embassy, first we said, oh shit, it's only, only going to be internal work, but it wasn't. The facade, I didn't, I didn't do, uh, tell very much about the facade, but the facade is, it's movable. Uh, the whole facade can move, move up and f uh, can, can open up in different ways. And so it's a, it can look like a very dead facade, but it can, it can look c quite, quite different. And, uh, and we, we did uh, stainless steel metal facade. And opposite us was uh, uh, the Finnish people that did a wooden facade. And this, and I think all the different architects, they work more with the f uh, buildings as, as, as sculptures than, than, than buildings with window, wall, window, wall. So it became, you, uh, if you understand what I mean, more like a sculptural uh, surface. And that was quite interesting. Once you started on it. Wasn't that, wasn't that time um, the perimeter of all of those services was yeah. this projected type of steel? Yeah. It had to be because it Yeah, it is. It is too. Every, every, everything is going to look peculiar. Yeah. But it's from, from the outside, it looks like one big building. Yeah. And, but f uh, then you come and look inside, it looks like a little, yeah. little village. And I think that's actually good. It's a big contrast when you see it from the outside. Uh, and that was actually the idea, I think, from the client, the clients, the Nordic embassies, when they started up. If they build an embassy each of the countries, uh, fairly small countries, countries, then it would be small buildings. But if they went together, they could make a, a bigger thing from the outside. But at the same time, every, uh, every embassy could have their own look. So this is actually what was uh, good about it. That was quite interesting. Yeah, that's a community house. Yeah, so yeah. That's yeah, that's home. Yeah, but the <laughs> the interest. No, no. Uh, and another interesting thing was that before you know Schengen, uh, before uh, Germany and, and most of Europe except UK uh, went into Schengen, uh, there was a problem because the garden, the lawn outside, the shape was actually still. Nordic. So if a, a burglar went into the, just be standing on, the, on the, the lawn, the police could not come after him because he was in a foreign country. <laughs> <laughs> so that was, uh, and, and the, bu the building was actually built before the Schengen, but luckily they went into the Schengen afterwards so the police could come after the burglars too. So there's no secure <laughs> area. Any, any more questions? No? Okay, with that, I think. Thank you. Thank you.